millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am, but Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because, let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high-quality, grass-fed, and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork-raised crate-free, and wild-caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious, and all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com etm. And use code ETM to choose your free offer and get $20 off. What is going on with inflation and how will it impact the holidays? On this episode of Shauna Shares Community Q&A. You're listening to Millennial Money with award-winning money expert and serial entrepreneur, Shauna Come to Game, where we flip the script on the old school approach to everything your parents never taught you about money. Each week, Shauna creates a safe space by talking with special guests from around the world about money wellness, entrepreneurship, traveling like a boss, and what makes millennials tick. Unique stories, trailblazing perspectives, tips, tricks, and everything there is to know about money. Find it all here as you uncover your money story and unlock the life you want to live. Pretty cool, right? Here's Shauna, money expert, Indiana Hoosier, and burger aficionado. Hello, hello, my friend. Welcome back to another episode of Shauna Shears Community Q&A, where I answer your questions from top to bottom. I love the question for this episode because there's a lot of talk about the word inflation, but it's easy to not understand what that actually means to you. So this episode's question comes from Selena. Selena says, hey, Shauna and everyone at Millennial Money. I was so excited to find your podcast last year in the midst of a very tough money year and a really tough year all around. I was feeling super down about my money and not being able to hit my goals. I just want to first say thank you that you helped me get rid of some stress, sleep better, and hit my goal of fully funding my Roth IRA in 2020. This year, I wanted to go deeper, start stock investing, pay off some debt, and get more of a money vision together. And I was like, hey, Let me see what my girl Shauna has to say. I'm so happy to report that I've checked off all of those on my list, even without making any additional money. Seriously, when you say we can do it, you actually mean it. I tell all my friends about this show. Okay, my question. I'm hearing a lot about inflation and the holidays, and I don't totally understand why I should even care. I'm in my early 40s and have heard stories that inflation was really high in the 80s, I think. And there were long lines for gas, getting a mortgage was super expensive, but what does it mean now? And will I actually feel anything this holiday season? And I guess even into next year. Thank you again for all that you do. Really, it makes a difference. Your friend, Selena. Selena, well, first, honestly, I have to give you a huge round of applause for just taking action with your money. You created the change. I might have given you a little inspiration, but I certainly don't deserve the applause. You do. That's the thing about money. When I talk about success, money success, whatever that word means to you, being 
90% mental. I'm, I'm seriously, I'm not joking. <laughs> Just like Selena, you, you don't have to earn extra money. Although of course it helps. I'm never going to argue that. But you can start to make small little changes with how you spend your money, focusing on your vision. You can start investing with spare change. You could take that spare change and put it towards one of your debts to be paid off. It's all about creating momentum. And then that momentum tells your brain, look, I'm actually doing it. This goes for big goals and small goals. And it doesn't matter if you're just starting out or making a million dollars plus a year. Where your mind goes, your energy flows. It's really so important when we're talking about money. Okay, Selena, on to your question though. Yes, inflation. Probably if you've tuned into the news lately or gone on any website about money, you've heard the talk about inflation. The definition is a general increase in prices and a fall in the purchasing value of money. So think of it this way. It's the idea that your bottle of water is more expensive tomorrow than it is today, but you still have the same amount of money that you're using to try and buy that bottle of water. So the amount of money, the dollar that you had today to buy that bottle of water, tomorrow it might cost you a dollar twenty, and you've only got a dollar to spend. So everything is just getting more expensive. And I'm going to link in the show notes a great online site called Trading Economics, where if you're really interested, you can geek out and look at all sorts of inflation information. But quoting this site, they say that the annual inflation rate in the U.S. accelerated to 6.8% in November of 2021. This is the highest since June of 1982, and that this is in line with, with all the forecasts. So they're saying that there's rising demand, there's wage pressure, supply chain disruptions. There's a lot of things going on that are pushing prices up. So the second part, Selena, you asked is, okay, how is this actually going to impact my wallet? Well, the reality is it probably already is without you maybe even consciously being aware of it. So according to Yahoo Finance, I found this really interesting. The biggest increases in inflation right now are gas, which if you've gone to fill up your tank, you definitely know that. Rental cars, used vehicles, hotel rooms, transportation, furniture, and new vehicles. So those are the categories where inflation is increasing the most. But thinking about the holidays, the inflation impact it's also going to be felt in gifts. And when you combine that with all sorts of funky supply chain issues that we're having now, I'm just I'm just telling everyone in my family, look, I'm going to go back to homemade cards with macaroni posted on them. That's what you're going to get this holiday season. Okay, but seriously, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I might actually do it. I think it'd be a fun twist of things, right? Go back to your childlike self. But Selena, you're probably already feeling it. And as you march forward the next couple of months, you may feel it even more. So I decided it would be great just to hear from an expert on this. So I had a chance to chat with Kristen Myers, the editor-in-chief of The Balance, a really cool personal finance site, to provide insight into how inflation is hitting our wallet this year, what we can even expect over the holidays, and Find out some tips and tricks on how we can rethink this holiday shopping. So let's jump into that conversation and hear what Kristen has to say. So I think we just start at the beginning and have kind of a general understanding of what inflation is and how does it actually impact our lives. So can you can you explain it a little bit to us? Yeah. So inflation, just very basically, um, is the decrease of the purchasing power of your money. So essentially that $1 that you might have not going as far right now as it might have uh, done previously. And that's essentially because of the rising costs of, of goods and services that you might choose to purchase. So what are some of the factors right now that are uh, increasing inflation? Because we hear it a lot in podcasts and articles and on the news, but I don't think we really understand 
how does it actually increase? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, there, because inflation can be caused by so many different factors. But right now, what we are seeing um, is pandemic-related inflation. Um, so essentially, you have labor shortages right now. So essentially, goods um, and services are not being produced at the same rate and level that they were previously. You're also not seeing goods being moved around um, as they once were. So you're seeing low inventory as a result, you know, because there's not as many truck drivers, for example, to get, you know, items from the ports to the stores. And that lower inventory is causing, you know, that spike in, in costs. And then there's also rising fuel prices. And this that's a little bit more complex and complicated. But <laughs> typically speaking, the more expensive something like oil is, the more um, inflation that you are going to see because we do need that energy essentially to kind of fuel the whole supply chain and even make some of these goods and items. Are there trends that uh, when we're talking about inflation, are there a certain time of year where inflation just tends to be a little bit higher or is that not really the case? It's just something that that rises and falls kind of randomly, I guess I would say. Well, it's not totally random. And, you know, the U in the United States, the Federal Reserve actually has an inflation target. So you don't want inflation to be totally zero. You know, you, they have a target rate of 2%. Uh, right now, just for reference, last month, uh, the CPI, that's an inflation gauge and measure uh, that inflation rate was 6.2%. So we are well beyond wow. right that 2% rate that we do want. And the Federal Reserve will kind of raise rates, lower rates to keep it level and steady throughout the year, because you don't want to see what we're seeing right now, which is inflation running totally rampant. We don't want volatility in inflation. And so we do have mechanisms in place to kind of keep it flat and steady throughout the year. So thinking about the holidays, uh, I know so many of us have gone to order something and it's out of stock. Uh, I know I have done that myself, or it's just a big delay. I, I recently moved and we had to buy a whole bunch of new stuff. And it, it felt like we were waiting weeks and weeks, which is, of course, very impatient. Now we're sort of trained to like get something in two days. <laughs> But uh, just thinking about the supply chain and how everything is, we're, we're just in a really different time than we've been in. And I know it, at thebalance.com, you guys recently did an analysis in that you found that the Christmas holiday season, it's the cost of, of virtually everything are expected to be about 17% more than in 2019 from gifts to trees to meals to all sorts of things. So Thinking about that and kind of having this this understanding, are there ways we can prepare our our wallets and even our expectations for this inflation increase? Uh, that is such a good question, uh, and unfortunately, I don't know if I have the best news <laughs> to give <laughs> to give everyone out there. It's going to be easier, I think, to prepare your expectations than it is going to be to prepare your wallet right now. That's just the environment that sadly we are in. As you as you mentioned, uh, there is low inventory. There has been analysis on this just over you know the recent holiday the weekend holiday shopping that we saw with uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And essentially there was 8% more out of stock um, notices than there have been previously. So uh, a few things. Uh, one, just expect to pay more. That is just the, the very unfortunate reality. Expect to pay more if you want to buy a Christmas tree. We found, as you mentioned, we did a study on this. Uh, that's going to cost you 26% more than last year. If you like, wow. I know if you like eggnog now, I don't thankfully, so I won't be hurt by this, but I, I don't either. I, I did ask Shauna, a lot of people really like their eggnog. Well, it's going to cost you 27% more this year than it did last year. So just some of these, you know, holiday favorite items are going to be far more expensive. And so this is where the expectations come in. Expect to pay more. Uh, so if you have money saved up, it might need to go to some of those those holiday gifts or perhaps just think a little bit differently about holiday shopping. Get creative. Does everyone need as many items on their Christmas list, you know, as they, as they wanted? Probably not. Um, 
this is a good time to try to save a little bit and, and cut back on some of that holiday spending and, and also just be aware of those food items that are going to cost more. Ham, for example, definitely uh, spiking in price over 60%. Um, yeah, it, it's it's bad out there <laughs> right right now, especially when it comes to the food. Um, and, and then, like I said, the, the inventory is just lower. So if you are out there and you are shopping and you see an item today in, in stock, you're going to want to buy it. It will likely not be there tomorrow or next week. So if you're, you know, holding out for a discount, I love doing that. I'll see something in store and then I'll wait and hope that it goes on sale. Uh, do not try to do that this year. Uh, and then you're just going to have to shop around, really. It, I love to do one-stop shopping because I hate going to the mall at Christmas time. It, it's like a it's like a, a massive fight with everyone. So I like to just go to one place, get a, get all of my items or as many of my items as I can. You probably, unfortunately, won't be able to do that this year. You might have to kind of jump around to different stores, see if you can score some more better discounts at one store over the other, and even just to get everything on your list. So being very intentional with the dollars we have and uh, I guess choosing to, to spend them wisely, right? To, to make versus sort of unconscious spending choices that we usually make, try to be a little bit more conscious about the decisions we're making and even taking a little bit more time to not necessarily hold up on our purchase, but maybe uh, use some apps or different things to, to help us save as much as we possibly can. And there are so many of those apps that are out there that you can, you know, add right into your browser so that when you're shopping online, for example, it can flag you if there's a cheaper price somewhere else on the internet where you can purchase that item. So definitely make use of that. But I think what you just said is so important. Be intentional with the spending of your money this year. Inflation, and there's been so much debate about it, but Right now, the prevailing thought that inflation is going to come down a little bit. So we should be expecting some relief uh, in 2022. So 2022 is Christmas, hopefully won't be as painful financially as this year's is. So maybe this is just the year that everyone gives each other, you know, homemade gifts or cards or, you know, decides to purchase something like a stock <laughs> or, or yeah, you I know, like instead of uh, something digital, instead of trying to fight, fight everyone at a mall or, or try to, you know, get a Christmas gift that's not going to arrive until March because of, of all of the shipping delays, because that's what we're seeing right now. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to put something in uh, online cart and then I go to check out and I look at the the shipping or arrival date and uh, and I see March or April. I'm like, what? <laughs> I know. We've been very spoiled, I think, especially with we see a lot of the online retailers, Amazon Prime, you know, doing that two day shipping and then Walmart and Target following suit essentially to compete now. I, I mean, just candidly, if I have to wait longer than four days to receive something, I just take it right out of my cart because I'm just so used to getting what I want right now. Uh, and I think that this this last couple of months with everything that's been happening with, you know, the supply chain and inflation has really just been an exercise in patience. So mm. everyone needs to, you know, take a deep breath, practice some patience if you really want that item you might just have to wait a little bit for it. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps, but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. 
Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So, how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, Honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash T-O-S for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust member FDIC. Want to know the number one money question I'm asked? It's how to get started investing without being overwhelmed. So if you're asking yourself the same question, then you have to check out the Investing for Beginners podcast. The host, Dave and Andrew, they break down investment terms and strategies in a way you can finally understand. I love that they're making investing accessible and they have an entire podcast dedicated to helping you invest better. Even if you're not ready to start investing, they explain the stock market and financial updates so you can really understand what is being said on the news. If you're ready to learn more about investing, I'd recommend you start with two of my favorite episodes. Listener Q&A, how do you start investing with a thousand bucks, where they explain how you get started right away. And back to basics of building your portfolio, where they explain how to build a portfolio from scratch. The Investing for Beginners podcast is a great way to start expanding your relationship with money. Find Investing for Beginners podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. I like that. It's kind of like resetting all of our expectations. I like that. (laughs) Um, So going back to inflation, just so we have a little bit more of an understanding. So we obviously know that right now we're in a really high uh, inflation time. What happens kind of behind the scenes, if you will, that actually works to bring down inflation? Yeah. So there's a there's a couple of, you know, more complicated mechanisms going in going on. 
And I mentioned that the Federal Reserve, right, has this goal set of of 2% inflation rate. One of the quickest and easiest ways that they try to essentially bring inflation back, and it's one of the main tools that they really have in their toolbox, is actually interest rates, raising those interest rates. And so when you raise interest rates, you start to see some of that purchasing of goods start to decline, uh, which allows that demand to come down, which allows that inventory to come back up. And you start to see some of those prices start to fall just a little bit. The quickest way or the easiest way to think of this um, is in mortgages. You know, uh, right now mortgages are incredibly low and it means that home prices are for anyone out there that's tried to buy a house knows this home prices right now are absolutely on fire. I mean, homes that I've seen homes that even by me that I would have thought, cost only maybe let's just say 300,000 are now going for 600 700,000, dollars which is in, which is crazy uh, because i'm thinking who is paying these prices for some of these homes you know the the kitchens from 1972 and the bathroom looks like it's from the same year but people are paying it because that's their only options right now so if the fed goes out and raises interest rates for example those very low mortgage prices will start to rise. And that means that it'll be, it won't be as cheap, you know, to at least to get a loan for a house. So we're going to start to see some of those home prices come down. So that's just a very easy way um, to kind of think just at scale what's happening um, behind the scenes, you know, when the Fed decides to, to raise some of those interest rates. So that those raising of those rates is coming. Uh, the Fed has has said that they are looking to raise interest rates. Um, and so hopefully inflation will come back down, um, at least from that one mechanism. There are others, um, but they are far more complicated. <laughs> so is there, or, or I guess, are there any reasons why maybe the Fed has not raised those rates thus far? Like, is there any rationale behind that? Yeah, this is a really great question. Um, I have talked to so many analysts about this and they've, there's just actually a very big debate going on right now, very truthfully between economists, between analysts about what the Fed should do, if they should raise rates, if they should lower them, if they should hold them. Uh, The answer is essentially that because of the pandemic, they did not want to raise rates and really cause uh, more financial pain for Americans. So Right now, the Fed has been trying to to inject, you know, pandemic assistance into the economy. You know, we saw the federal government giving out money, you know, throughout the pandemic to really help people financially. That contributed to inflation, you know, just so much money being available in the economy, more money than there was before contributed to inflation. And so they didn't want to pull that assistance back at a time when so many folks were unemployed and struggling financially. You know, we had mortgage moratoriums because people were struggling to pay rent and, and to pay for their homes. So they didn't want to pull back some of that assistance and raise interest rates in, a, in an environment when people were still struggling economically. But right now, we do have a lot of signs that the economy is going back to strength. One of them being the jobs market. You know, we just had a a jobs report come out and it seems that the unemployment is ticking lower um, than we had expected. Today, actually, weekly jobless claims came out and they fell to their lowest level since, get this, Shauna, 1969. Wow. So there are signs, you know, in the economy that there is, that, that it is strengthening. And I think that's also one of the reasons why you are seeing the Federal Reserve saying, okay, maybe now is the time for us to start considering employing some of those tools that they have. So it's a little bit of a give and take, right? So if they came in and employed some of those tools, yes, inflation would come down. Maybe our eggnog and our ham would be a little bit more affordable, but uh, other things in terms of uh, mortgages or just, you know, other, other financial transactions might become a little bit more expensive. So there's kind of this it's almost like a seesaw, I guess, kind of relationship, right? That exists when we're talking about inflation. 
A hundred percent. That is such a great way to think about it. There, it's it's a, honestly it's a balancing act, and just like anyone who's been on a seesaw, you know, there is that point where you can actually maintain that that really nice equilibrium, and both people on on either side of the seesaw can actually have their legs in the air. You know, yeah. And that's essentially what the government and what the what the Fed is attempting to do right now. They are attempting to kind of maintain that balance and that equilibrium, because uh, if one person is on the ground and one person's in the air, then it's not really a seesaw anymore. It's it's just one person. <laughs> it's just both people stuck in in one position. And that's not exactly fun. I love that. Yeah. And you, you're talking a lot about the the economy and some some indicators. I think we all just go throughout our life. We don't really understand the economy and inflation and how these things kind of all interconnect. Are are there ways we can become a little bit more in tune with what's going on uh, with the economy? Are there like economic trends that even we can just sort of have our eye on to know, okay, this is kind of where things are headed. This is maybe how that might impact our money kind of going forward. Yeah, it's so many things are interconnected. And I think right now, so many folks are, are understanding what's happening on the back end, right? You go to the gas pump and you're paying an arm and a leg just to, you know, to, to fill up your, your gas tank, you know, and, or you go to the grocery store and you're saying, wait a minute, I never used to pay this much for milk, you know, for example. Um, so we we do see the effects, but I think to that point, so many people don't realize what's happening on the front end that's making us kind of have these pain points financially on the back end. So every month <clears throat> we do see uh, jobs claims, jobs then the jobs report that shows the strength of the employment picture. So that ties into right now, those labor shortages, for example, folks that are going back to work that impacts wages. Um, so higher, the higher the wage, hopefully it helps people pay for some of the higher price of goods. And then you also have that CPI that comes out every single month. And that is the main inflation gauge that we do see. So there's, there's a lot of different pieces of economic data. Home sales, for example, is another one that comes out every single month. These pieces of economic data are out every single month. And when you start to pay attention to them, you can kind of, you know, more, more understand the bigger picture and better understand how everything is all interconnected and all working with each other or sometimes against each other you know, to impact what we eventually see happen to our wallet. And so right now, what we're seeing with our wallet is is the result of a lot of things that's happening in terms of inflation, in terms of oil prices, in terms of the labor market and more. And they're all working together to right now create this environment where unfortunately, a, a dollar uh can does not go very far at the dollar store. Everything is now over a dollar if you ever if you go there. So I always like to think of everything in the dollar. Um, things that cost a dollar for us previously are now a dollar twenty five or even a dollar fifty. So you are uh, editor in chief of the personal finance site, The Balance. Uh, we're obviously talking about inflation right now and the holidays, but. Curious if there are any topics, any other topics right now that that readers are really interested in reading. Yeah, so I love to think about politics because politics does play into um, what's happening with our money. Uh, and right now, I think one of the biggest things that we have been watching out for is what's happening in Congress with the debt ceiling. Um, because if Congress doesn't come up with a a solution to raise the debt ceiling, um, there there could be a really big financial uh, calamity is the word I've been using. I've heard others use Armageddon. Uh, it's a very bad situation if we uh, go over that cliff and, and that's coming in just next week. So it'll be very interesting to see what, what uh, Democrats and Republicans are able to do. Um, and then just more broadly, when it comes to our wallets, you know, We've been tracking gas prices and oil prices and energy prices, and we've been noticing that they are, as I'm sure many people know at home, 
they are trending upward. So heating your home is just getting more and more expensive. So the memo is everything's just getting more expensive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely, Sean. That is the if if there's no other takeaway from this, it is everything is more expensive, everything costs more. Just buckle down and, and wait for everything to come back. It is coming. Uh inflation is lowering. It we will get there, we will get through to the other side of this, but it's definitely going to be a painful several months just to get there. <sighs> painful. <laughs> I know. I wish I, I wish I had a, a more positive note uh, to end on when it comes to uh, to our money. The only one I can think of is that if you like cookies, cookies are cheaper oh, this year than they were last we year. So there we go. That's my that's a, my sweet note to end on. I love cookies. So that is definitely a fantastic way to end. Well, Kristen, I would love for you to tell everyone if they're interested in finding out more about all these different topics you just talked about, uh, where can they go and find the balance? Absolutely. You can find us on thebalance.com. We are also on Instagram at thebalance.com and also on Twitter at thebalance. So everyone can keep up with some of the stories and the analysis that we are doing. We care about what's happening to your wallets and we will always make sure to tell you the best tips and tricks and where prices are increasing the most. So definitely check us out. I know for the last few years, we keep talking about things looking different at the holidays, but this year, I think that's really a reality. Inflation, as Kristen said, it looks like it's here to stay, at least for the short term. So it just means we need to be super intentional with our money. Know how much you can spend without going into debt. Set some boundaries just to make sure that you shop smarter this season and just can roll out of the season feeling feeling good. And just know, like everything in the world of money, it will get better. I just don't know when. <laughs> so thanks again, Selena, for this amazing question. If you have an Ask Sean a question, you can head right over to the show notes. There's a link. It will take you to a field. You can fill in a success story or a burning question. As always, if you enjoyed this episode, do me a favor and share it with a friend or family member, someone who's really curious about this idea of inflation. And as always, you can head to the show notes for all the links to our episode, as well as our amazing sponsors who make this podcast possible. I'll see you back here in a few days for a brand new episode. Hey, you. Yes, you. Before you go, we want to say thanks for listening to this episode of Millennial Money. For all the links, tags, and ads you've heard on today's episode, check out the show notes or go to mmoneypodcast.com where you'll find more episodes to share with your friends. While you're at it, leave us a review and make sure to subscribe wherever you listen so you don't miss out on all the money tips and tricks that will take you from a millennial regular to a millennial money expert. See you back here in a few days with a fresh new episode.